Welcome, welcome, welcome to our first NRL fantasy chat of 2024. You know me, I'm your host, Joey, as always. And alongside me today is none other than Daniel Long, the NRL casual athlete. Daniel, how are you, mate? Joey, mate, it's great to be here. Um, it's getting pumped up for fantasy season. We're a month out and I'm excited. How about we you? Are, mate. We are. I am good. I am uh, ready, as always, for fantasy uh, and super coach, so we don't offend anyone. Uh, but of course, <laughs> NRL fantasy is what we're here for. It's going to be really good. I can't wait. Uh, for those that don't know who you are, do you just want to tell us a little bit about your fantasy journey and uh, where it all started? Yeah, for sure. So I won um, NRL fantasy a, a long way back. Uh, I won that in about 2013. Um, since then, I've just been a fantasy diehard across the board. Uh, I've got a podcast called The Casual Athlete, where we go into fantasy tipping, general NRL. And I do some work with the NRL, um, NRL.com as well as a fantasy analyst there too. So a bit of a spread, um, yeah. basically a fantasy nerd at heart, but uh, just love the Parramatta Eels in general too, which can be confusing looking behind me, but it's all Parramatta for me. Oh, I love that, mate. Uh, I'm a Chook supporter myself. Uh, everyone would know that who's listening, but you might not. But uh, yeah, I'm a Chook supporter. Uh, if you don't know Daniel, he runs NRL The Casual Athlete. That's his handle on TikTok. And uh, we know each other because he made a TikTok video of me back in, uh, I think, was it round four? It was pretty Man, you looked one. You looked devastated because the <laughs> Chooks had just gone down about 42-0. Against Penrith, yeah, look, yeah. it fair, was it was the teams have done it. Like, final score was forty eight four. You know, okay. we did have we did have one try, but mate, uh, I I remember that day because before you made the TikTok, Vossi called me out. I, I was actually on Fox, and and Vossi called me out. He said, "Oh, good to see you supporting your teammate, but nothing to smile about." But I remember being there, and it was when Taruva scored, and like Taruva is built, man, and he is a scary human being. He looked into my soul. After he scored that try, he looked directly at me and was like throwing the ball. And I, I, I shit my pants. I was oh so, God. I was so nervous because I mean you've seen the size of Taruva, but and then uh, yeah, I got home, didn't have TikTok, and all my friends started showing me this awesome TikTok video that you made. <laughs> and mate, we've had like twenty seven thousand likes on it, so yeah, it's been awesome. But mate, if you haven't the, had a look, it was the Hello Darkness, my old friend soundtrack yes. that, yes. uh, that really played into the the empty eyes that you had. <laughs> The sadness, surrounded by Penrith fans who have just seen nothing but glory. Uh, brutal, mate. Brutal. Mate, it was it was sort of the story of the Roosters' season until the back end. But, yeah, um, no, you're absolutely right. But, yeah, if you haven't checked it out, go, jump on TikTok. I, I think you're also on Instagram too, aren't you, mate? And NRL, the casual athlete, and uh, check him out and have a look. He's got some great content. But let's get into what we came here for, NRL Fantasy. Now, I'm going to go through some uh, – yeah, let's go through our teams first. Now, I know you probably don't want to give a lot away, so we'll, we'll just go through a few positions. Um, I, I wanted to get your opinion on the hooking spot. We know previously the hooking spot has been probably one of your best. You know, you've had mm. – uh, it, it's been a bit of a gold field with Harry Grant, Damian Cook in the past. Um, Reese Robson last year I thought was really good. And then you've had ones where, you know, people have liked to experiment. You, you read Marnie's, but then they've made – lots of errors in their game and, um, you, you know, th those sort of players. Abby Coruscant did pretty well last year. But let's start with our hooking role. Now, this year, should people still be looking for a premium hooker or do you think it's better for those cheaper options? I think you want multiple hookers. That's that's sort of the answer there. Um, yeah. I think the Parramatta situation presents one hooker, almost yeah. guaranteed. So Brad Arthur yeah. obviously came out, he said, I'm going to have an 80 minute hooker. I'm not going to carry a second one. So whether that's Lustig or hands, I think it's going to be hands. I think he's got that second year leap in him. Um, a whole preseason will do him, do him well, but hands is going to make you about 200 K if he yep. can stay in there and play those minutes, and not get hurt. So you go, Brendan hands is a bit of a cash cow. You're then missing out. If you don't have another hooker in place. Now, if we go down the list, Harry Grant, he's priced what he's worth pretty much. So that's not bad. He's consistent. He's not going to drop too much. Uh, Damian cook, he dropped from 66 to 56 on his average the year before last to last year. Wow. Uh, I just, I don't see that bouncing back. So I think no. again, he's worth about what you're paying. Reese Robbo is a guy that I think is, is really good. So he went from seven tries in 2022 to two tries last year. Um, we know how good his show and go is. I mean, do you think he could bounce back? 
Because the question is, do you think the Cowboys are going to bounce back? Uh, and if they are, then he's a great buy. I I do. I think with the the latest news of Dearden and Cotter becoming club captains, I think that's an amazing move. And I've actually moved Cotter into my team because of that. Uh, yeah. I think I, I think with, with him getting the C, sure he's going to start. And I think, you know, pa- Payne Haas is such a good fantasy player. I, I know we're talking about Robson, but I've gone off track a little bit. But I've, I've thrown Cotter in my team because he's got the C. I yeah. think the Cowboys bounce back. I think they just scrape into the eight. I think Scotty Drinkwater, he had a really good season in patches. You know, he's still probably not I, – I wouldn't say – I wouldn't say a lock. I wouldn't I wouldn't go him over, you know, a Kalen Ponga. Um, for example, but and, and I think in your fullback spot, you, you've got the likes of Jaden Campbell, but we'll talk a bit about that later. But mate, Robson's looking good. I mean, personally, I haven't got him. I've gone Lussick. I've gone Joey Lussick um, as my starting hooker. And I I heard you chat on NRL.com today, mm. and I've I've gone back. I'm gonna I'm ready to be heard again. But I've gone the cheese, mate. I've gone <laughs> the cheese again. I know it's so hard. But the DPP just it's so juicy. It's so juicy, mate. I just I, I yeah. don't know what to do. I mean, before before I jumped on, you told me to put a few uh a few burn guys in, <laughs> a few guys that never go for again. Cheese is one of them. <laughs> Look, he's he's great. He's great. He's yeah. been a Delian Delian hooker Delian of the year in the past. He can score a try, he can hit as hard as anyone at hooker. Uh, it's just, you know, is, is he going to come in fit enough to play the big minutes? And I think yeah. we're going to get a pretty clear indicator of that through the preseason. Um, if he looks good in the preseason, looks fit, comes in unscathed, then look, the Chooks are a good team. It's a good recipe. Um, but if he's getting smaller minutes in the preseason, whatever it is, I don't know. He's not in my team right now, but I could be swayed as well. What's your thought on Marshall King for this year? We know what a season he had last year. It was very good for the Dolphins. He is injury prone. However, Cody Nicarima at 14, but I don't really, I don't see Cody taking too many minutes from him. I think one injury to the back line and Cody's probably in the back line. So uh, what, what's your thoughts there on Marshall King? Yeah, I don't think Cody takes many minutes from him either. I think, I think you're on point there. Uh, yeah. Marshall King, look, he was held back by injuries last yeah. year. So your questions are, one, is he fit coming into the year? Yes. That's right. Two, are the Dolphins going to be as good as they were last year? I'm not sure about that. I think a lot of teams around them have really elevated. They yeah. elevated too. They got Flegler and um, Farmworth into the team, but I just think it's going to be really competitive. So, yeah, Marshall King, he's probably about five points of value. Uh, and there are guys like this, right? Like, I'm going to skip ahead a bit here, but when you, you look go. at uh, Isaiah Yo versus Payne Haas, for example, yeah. Payne Haas last year didn't score below 60 till round eight or round nine. Um, and he picked up an injury in that game. So when we're looking at who to start with there, Payne Haas is better than Isaiah Yo until he picks up a niggle, which he does much more frequently than Isaiah Yo. Isaiah Yo is that guy where if you picked him and you stuck with him the entire season, he's going to just never let you down, basically. So it's the same with Marshall King. If you're going to get Marshall King, get him at the start, but don't waste a trade buying him if, if you've missed out on that train. It's hard because the Dolphins have a buy round three. So mm. do you potentially wait till round four? Or do you start with him? I mean, that's he he's definitely going to give you that value. If you have a backup, you could potentially start with him in round one. Which you will. The power yeah, hooker. Exactly. You'll have one. You the the other hooker I want to talk about, mate, Raiders. Now, uh Wolford, his contract, he 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 wanted to move and, and they said no, but Denny Levi has come back onto the scene. Now, Levi is very cheap at the moment. Mm. Do we expect him to start? From what I'm hearing from Raiders sources is that Levi is all set to start in the nine and Starling at 14. So it could be another cheap option there. My worry there is Starling's so good, right? They don't like starting Starling, but Starling is their number one hooker off the bench. Um, yeah. it's, a bit, it's a bit like what he was 10 years ago, right? When you had, you know, yeah. PJ Marsh at Parramatta or like every club had a, um, a hooker like that. But yeah, I, I Levi, I don't know. I could skip him personally, yeah. unless I saw some crazy preseason form. Uh, I just think he'll start, but he'll play 40 minutes or maybe even less. Like if you bring Starling on with 10 minutes to go in the first half and he plays it out, it's not a bad outcome for the team. Uh, if we are short on cash cows, maybe we take that stab. But at this stage, there's some other guys I like better. I think the problem with him is he would be a slow cash burn. Mm. Um, I, I think it would take him a while to make you money. And I think, as you said, there are better options. And look, 
to be honest, this year, how many Raiders can we have? I mean, there's there's lots of cashies to talk about as we go through the positions for the Raiders. Um, mate, I think we've covered the hooking spots there, really. Abby Coruscant, probably not much value this year. It's just, I, I don't know if he can keep that ceiling that he had. He is a great player, mm. um, but I don't know. Lachlan Croker from Manly, he's he's a player that won't let you down, but just fantasy-wise, it doesn't really uh, translate. And then Reed Marnie, as I spoke before, I had Reed Marnie originally. I actually had Marnie in my mm. first draft that I did. But the issue I had is last year he burnt me. Last year with the the mistakes that he was making, um, and look, I, I think that will improve this year. But I just don't know if I, I mean I've gone back to the cheese, so I guess I could go back to Marnie as well. But yeah, what's your take on Marnie? Um, yeah, I mean he was he, what was he top two, top three in missed tackles. Last yeah, year, yeah, so yeah. I mean, if you sort of look at them and go, I'm looking at their forward pack and thinking the middle rotation has improved that much. That's Josh right. Curran comes in super explosive. I love that he's at the dogs. I think yeah. he's a must have for fantasy, by the way, as well. But um, I think he improves their attack a bit. I still don't think that they have a formidable formidable forward pack in defense. Mm. So you look at that middle rotation. Reed's going to get a lot of t- a lot of moments where he's isolated. He's still going to miss those tackles. It's not a diss on him. It's more on their pack. Yeah. Um, does he take over more in terms of maybe the kicking game or creatively an attack? Again, I don't really think so. Uh, I think they'll play through Burton and Sexton a lot. And I think whether Crichton's at center or fullback, I think he should be at fullback for the money they paid. Um, they're just going to play to the edges quite a bit because then they've got guys like Karaz, you know, Bronson Zeri in reserves. Yeah. Um, even a guy like Skelton, if he gets moving this year. Absolute freak. I think they've got some there's some talent on the edges they're going to play towards um, rather than play in the middle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, interesting there. But, yeah, I think the consensus is you look at either Robson, Marshall King, and then, yeah, one of your para hookers as a cheap option. But let's jump into our mids, mate. Now, the best position in NRL fantasy, we know your mids get you tons of points if you play it right. Uh, Payne Haas, always, you know, fantasy gun. He, he's the, the Jason Tamalala of a few years back. So, he uh he'll he'll always do your job and I I don't mind starting with him. You will get him round zero too because he will be in Vegas. Um, yeah. so that is one upside that you will get his points from round zero. Uh, let's go through some of our mid options now. I spoke to you before, Ruben Cotter. Now he's got the C on his name. Uh, for me, you know he's been pretty good. In, I think it was two years ago he had a really good fantasy year. Um, last year, not so much, but he came off the bench a bit last year. He wasn't really given that spot. I think now that he has the C, he starts. I think he's I think he's the lock at the Cowboys. I think he's number 13, and I think he brings tons of value. He's cheaper than Haas as well. Uh, you save money there. Does play Origin. I mean, so does Haas, but mm-hmm. you, you have to plan for that anyway. But, yeah, what's your thoughts on those two to start with? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to have one of Haas or Yo. Uh, yeah. I, I just think you need to anchor the middle. That's the way it's yeah. shaping up for me this year. Uh, we look at Cotter, 587K. Yeah. Is, it's 300K cheaper than Haas exactly. and Yo, right? Um, I look at him. I'll give you the numbers, actually, because what you've said is exactly right. Yeah. Um, on the yeah. numbers, last year, he averaged 42 points. The year before, he averaged 52. Yeah. Right? So you got go. that drop. And he can still do it because last year when he played 60 plus minutes, he averaged 54. So... He's, he's 10 points of value, basically, no matter what. Um, mm-hmm. As long as he's not on the bench behind Jack Granville at lock, which I, I love Jack Granville, but what, what were they doing, man? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who fucking... knows? Oh, I mean, Granville, they, they might even move him to fullback. Who knows what Tony Payton does with Granville? But let's look at some other mid-options. Now, we spoke on Joshy Curran just before. Mm-hmm. I think a great option. Again, he's only 500K, I believe. He's pretty cheap as well. Um, should get that lock spot at the Dogs. And I was talking off air to another friend, and I don't really see Kurt Mann taking many minutes from him. I think Kurt Mann will more play in a second row rotation or a hooker rotation, take a few minutes off Reed, depending uh, on niggling injuries and things like that. Uh, that's if Mann is the 14. I mean, who knows that the dogs, it could be anyone. It could be Taff. It could yeah. be uh, – there, there's about 10 there that could be 14. But I think Curran plays about 65 minutes. And if he does, great option. Yeah, no, you're spot on with Curran. When he plays 60 plus, he averages 50. And when he plays yeah. lock, he averages 55. So you again, you're getting massive value. I think he averages about 60 this year. Yeah. I think he's just going to take one of those those leaps that guys do around his age. Um, looking at the rest, yeah, look, for, for the bench rotation ring, yeah, they've got like 10 utilities, don't they? Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> I think Kikau and Preston both play 80 minutes on the edges. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I think is playing in Curran's favor is the fact that they don't have a great prop rotation. So there's going to be times where man comes on to bring a bit of leg speed uh, and Curran might shift into prop, which mm -hmm. I don't know about that for the dogs as a strategy. They're a bit undersized, but I think that's what's going to end up happening. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we Speaking of that prop rotation, let's talk about Liam Knight. Now, cheap option for fantasy owners mm. for this year. Uh, should get the, the starting number 10 spot with Luke Thompson gone. Uh, any interest factor there, mate? Yeah, yeah, he's... He, he's there or thereabouts. Um, he's one of those guys I sort of earmarked, right? I, I just need to see him being favoured. I need to see him getting minutes in the preseason, being treated like a starter. That's that's really it. Because yeah. a guy like Liam Knight, you know, Fletcher Baker, um, going yeah. to Brisbane, he's the same. They're just guys who turn up and whatever minutes they get is the score they get in fantasy. So <laughs> if he's getting 40 minutes, he's going to get you 40 points. Uh, if he's getting 20, he's going to get you 20 points. So it's just about watching that into the preseason. One guy I think that's um, a bit more of a slam dunk there is Tavita Totola. Mm. So you get him for 485k, and he's not super heralded outside of fantasy in South Sydney. Yeah. Um, but he's a guy who, I'll give you the numbers on him actually. So he was a 44 average two years ago, yep. down to 35 last year. When he played 60 plus minutes last year, he averaged 67. Now, he's not going to average 67. He's not going to play 60 plus minutes, but he's a guy who converts points. Uh, from minutes and he'll get those minutes this year him and cam murray as well i mean actually i'm gonna throw one at you because i know you're a chookies fan so you yeah. hate south sydney so i'm gonna get you to compliment them uh do. do you think that they're gonna bounce back this year uh look i i want to say no <laughs> but I, i'd love i'd love to see south get the spoon but if as a as a podcaster and a an nrl fan i i think they have to i mean mm. they were almost there without Jack Whiten, now they get Jack Whiten, who uh, everyone's talking about Jack Whiten's age, but he's a good player. He's a good player, and he's been a good player for a long time. I think people are not giving Whiten the credit he deserves. It, he he is a gun, and, and he can play wherever. Like, so I, I I think they scrape in. I, I don't I don't know how far they go. Uh, mm. Shout out to the Cast Patrol boys if they're watching, but they, they love South Sydney. They were talking top four. Not sure about top four. I think they make the eight. I think they come back. But fantasy wise, I've got to tell her in my team. I think he's a great option. I think I I think you gotta have him. Doesn't play Origin. Probably not this year, anyway. Um, so it also gives you that coverage there as well. Um, and Cam Murray that you spoke about, I think a lot of people have been like sliding off Cam Murray in fantasy, and I don't know why. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know the reason for it because he's been a proven gun for a while. Oh, yeah. and, mm. and I know he's been swapping from, you know, he was lock and then he was second mm. row, but he's still scoring well. And he scores tries. So so you get you get extra points because he can find the try line really easily. I think they're both boosted because the Bunnies pack will be a bit lighter on this year. Uh, yeah. They do get Sean Kepi over from Manly. Uh, not Not a massive, not a big forward. So they will be a bit lighter on, um, which I think will really help to Tola. They lose Hame Sele to the Dragons as well. So that is another prop gone. But, mate, another mid-option I want to chat to you about. Uh, Spencer Lenu. There's been a lot of chat mm. about his price. But I think if he gets a bench spot at the Chooks, I'm not taking him in fantasy. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's hard to make that case from on the bench. Um, he yeah. is a guy who he comes in with a 28 average. Yeah. Uh, he averages 36 when he gets 40 plus minutes. Is he going to get 40 plus minutes off the bench? No, <laughs> absolutely not. If he's a starter, potentially. Uh, I'm not excited about, oh, sorry, I'm not excited enough about him to get him. Um, yeah. He's not in my team, but he, yeah, I, I think there's guys like him, Liam Knight, they just sort of need to blow us away in the preseason to really be yeah. worth it. Yeah. There are other guys like, like Talis Duncan, for example, who might come in at a, a really nice price and get 80 minutes on the edge, for example. So um, I think there's just going to be some better options than these guys. They'll, they'll make money, but will they make enough to justify it? Probably not. It'll be interesting. But yeah, I think the consensus there, as we said, you even need one of Haas or Yo, um, Cotter's a good option as well. Totola, not bad. And then maybe even like a Jack DeBellin, if you want to go down that route, uh, he'll, he'll get you what you need. He won't be flashy, but he'll get you what you need. Even a... Uh, um, Tino Tino will do the job for you as well For Newell Blake I don't know if he keeps The heights of last year 
did score a few tries last year. So mm. I thought he was inflated by that. Um, I don't have him this year just because I don't think – I think the Wars will be in the top eight, but I, I, I can't see them having the same year that they had last year. But, mate, let's jump into the edges. Really exciting stuff here I want to talk about. Now, a couple of Rooster Boys. Uh, look, the edge for men. us. Too many. <laughs> too many. The edges for us is probably – the, the biggest unknown for 2024. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got the likes of Nat, Nat Butcher's a lot for me. He He's automatically in that second row spot. But then you've got Angus Crichton, Sia Wong, and uh, Satili Tupanua, Tupanua as well. So Tupanua coming back from injury, I think he may get a bench spot. So that really opens it up to either Wong or Crichton. Now, whichever one of them gets picked to start, I'm taking. Because Crichton is the cheapest he's ever been. And one rule that I have in fantasy, once a fantasy gun, always a fantasy gun. And I yeah. think Angus Crichton still can be. If he gets that edge spot, there's no doubt in my mind that he will get you good points. But, yeah, what's your take on the Roosters? Man, it's a mess, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think the fact that Angus Crichton can play middle, yeah, whereas Sir Wong probably can't, um, plays into the favor of Sir Wong. So I think, I think we'll see Wong getting sort of 50, 60 minutes a game. Uh, I think we'll see Gus Crichton in that middle rotation because it's a bit mm-hmm. light for the Chooks, right? Um, yeah. Especially if Bradley gets hurt or suspended sure. or which, yeah, he always gets suspended for things. That's that right. So with, suspension's but, highly uh, likely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we can bet on that. Um, <laughs> it, it's the Radley buy, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They, they're both value. They're both value. I mean, like Sua Wong has a massive defensive work rate. So yep. at 440K or whatever he is, it's, it's a slam dunk. Uh, and Gus Crichton... I played a lot of draft and he was a first round pick like two or three yeah. years ago. Yeah. So exactly. again, yeah, you know, he's, he's sort of gone through it a bit now. He'll come back at some point and he'll heat up. And does he have DPP at the moment? He doesn't. But if he does play in that middle rotation round six, he will get the DPP. So he wouldn't be a bad option to have because you'll get edge and mid cover there as well. Uh, let's talk about some other edges. Uh, for feeder, always good fantasy wise. Well, last year he was back. Two years ago, not so good when they had him on the other edge. But uh, he's back, and I think the feeder is a great option if you need a gun in your edges. I, I think it's always good to stock your forwards pretty well. A um, couple of cheapies in there, but but stock them pretty well with some mid-ranges and some uh, some guns as well. So the feeder is a good one. Uh, we'll play Origin, so you, know, you probably won't get that cover. It's obviously injury pending. But the man I want to talk about, mate, and I'd never have manly players in my team, but Joshy Schuster, with yep. the DPP half second row coverage, that's juicy for me at a good price as well. What's your thoughts on Shuey? I'm going to throw a question at you. Guess what he averages when he plays second row for decent minutes. I'm going to say 45. Mate, you are so close. 47. 47, right? Yeah, and that's are. him when he was younger, when he was yeah. a bit more inconsistent. Um, look, he's had a whole preseason getting ready for this. They got Luke Brooks there as well, so they got some very creative guys in the spine. He just tucks it under the arm, gets the offload out every now and then, but really just figures out that he's a massive unit. He's going right. to crush it. So right. he's priced at a, a 29. So you're getting yeah. 20 points of value just off the bat. He has had a few injuries. Actually, I, had, I saw a post from uh, NRL Physio uh, just earlier. Um, let me just get that, actually. I've I've got him. He for, for me having that second row half coverage is so good. I mean, you, you you've yeah. you've got your half set. I mean, everyone's going to have you clear in your hinds, but to have someone like that who could cover during an origin period as well it is is awesome. I mean, we're all going to have edge covers, so mm. yeah, it's juicy. Do you want to hear his last two months though in terms yeah. of off-field injuries? Uh he's had chicken pox. He's fractured his finger and required a fusion surgery. Uh, he suffered a calf strain uh, fairly recently as well. <laughs> so he's bringing a few things into this season. But yeah, no, he's massive value. He's easy. I mean, yeah. I'll throw a few names in there because there are so many of these guys at that spot. Yep. Um, like Pia Kura oh. is just such an easy choice. Like, he'll get the minutes this year. They lose Kate Well. Yep, that's that's, that's no discussion. And then like Sean Lane is the other one. So he went yes. from 52 average two years ago to 35 last year. Yep. So you're getting massive value there too, especially if Parramatta look all right, which, you know, Parramatta's going to win the comp, obviously. So (laughs) he'll be good. (laughs) 
mate, th- 38 years later, we'll see. Uh, they, they, they might make it half a century soon. They've only got 12 years to go. But, mate, Sean Lane, great option. You're exactly right. He's he's on my radar. It, it just depends how many eels I want to have. I, I'm not I'm not really set on starting. I, I, I'm thinking about having brown in my halves. So, yeah, it just depends on how many eels I want. Um, Imagine the be, brown lane stack. That, that's it. And, and that's that's what I want. But I'm also thinking about Pemasini. So I I need to I, – I don't want to have too many. I don't want to have too many from one team just in case, you know, when they do have their buy, it, it does make you short. But both all, really good options there. Mate, let's jump into the halves. Uh, everyone's going to have Cleary. You know, he's, he's a lock. He's actually cheaper than Hines this year, which is incredible. Hines is actually the the gun half. Now, I know a lot of people are going both of them, but I'm not. I For starters, I can't afford it. Um, and I think that Jamal Fogarty is the man you need to have. He brings so much value this year. No Jack White. It's all going to be on Fogarty's shoulders at the Raiders. I don't think the Raiders are going to have the best season, but I think Fogarty is going to have a personal best season. He's got the goal kicking and he's priced at 500. So what were your options for halves looking like? Yeah, man. I mean, we look at the halves, like obviously Cleary and Hines, uh, the creme de la creme at uh, the yeah. position. Um, I'm looking down the list. I think Sean Johnson and DCE are due for regression. Uh, I think Luke Brooks takes over a lot of work um, in that halves premium manly. Uh, I think for SJ, it's a bit of a regression year. Last year was just exceptional. Yeah. Um, if we go down that list, you then go, look, Fogarty is a great pick. Um, he's going to do a lot. They're not going to be a great team, but there's a good forward pack that he plays behind, and they do have some guys who can score out wide. Um, I'll throw a few more at you. Uh, like Matty Burton, I think, could yes. easily go up five to ten points. Definitely. Uh, look at his scoring profile. I think, like, look, Sexton joined the team midway through last year. So it was a little bit jumbled. Uh, if he can come in this year and sort of up his run meters by 20, 30, 40, 50 meters a game and just focus on that, uh, lean into the long kicking game and maybe see some more attacking stats with the guys they've added to the team, uh, he's easily a guy who boosts up. And then you throw in the goal kicking as well. Let's say the dog score one or two extra tries a game. Uh, he's just going to boost up in points. So yeah, there's a lot of guys there in the halves. Uh, there's not too many that are cheap. Uh, you can look at Flanagan as well. Yeah, look at him. Well, I apparently still he's going to be yeah, uh, hooker though. Like, he's going to be running the show at the Dragons, according to to his dad. So uh... there's no way. There's no <laughs> way Ben Hunt steps back like that, mate. No way at all that happens. Uh... He should be a hooker though. Flano was so good at hooker last year in reserve grade. Yeah, but he's cheap, man. He he's a good option because. There's, there's no one – like, they've signed uh, Jesse Marshke from the Bears, but I, I think it's a bit of progression for Marshke before he's playing hard. So, yeah. I, I Flanagan's got a lot of upside. He's pretty cheap. He, he'll keep that sixth spot for as long as he wants to, really. And and to, I, I think what they'll do is eventually Hunt will move to hooker, Flano will move to halfback, and Marshke will move to six is what okay. I think they'll do. Uh, they don't really, like, Little's their hooker, but they don't really have any backup. they got um, Mulheron, I think it is. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think that's what will happen eventually. But let's move on from the halves, man. We The, the halves are pretty clear cut. Let's jump into the centres now. Mm. The, the hardest fantasy position uh, every year. And my motto that I do, I don't like to spend premium on my centres. I don't like to go hard on my centers. I save that for my mids, my hookers, and my um, uh, edge back rowers. But yeah. for centers this year, you can go premium. You can look at Valentine Holmes, who had a really good season last year, uh, apart from suspensions and things like that. Uh, of course, you've got the likes of uh, Zach Lomax, who I thought was a really good option, but now it's looking like he's going to be getting the wing spot at the Dragons. Mm. So for me now, he's a no. Um, if he had the center spot or fullback, I'd probably take him uh, because he is only 500K. I actually flirted with the idea, and I don't know what you think of this, but I flirted with the idea of Moses Sui. I know it's Moses Sui, and, and I know I know what he brings, <laughs> but yeah. I flirted with the idea because I just feel like the Dragon's attack is going to be better than what we've seen in previous years. And I think with Sui on that left side, uh, he'll be outside Jack Bird and Kyle Flanagan. 
So I think he has some real upside there. So he is only 500K as well. But, mate, I'm looking at cheap options. Jesse Arthurs gets dual position, wing fullback center. Uh, mm. He's a good option. Of course, we've got Ethan Strange and uh, Kale Iro as well from the Sharks. Yeah. I think we need to steer away from both of them. I I don't think Iro gets a start yet. I think maybe later in the season. I don't think he starts straight away. Strange is interesting. He could start, but I think if Seb Chris is back from suspension, he goes straight back into centre. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the centre spot? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a mess, isn't it? Like Chris proved himself last he year, did. the year before, yeah. and he's a super potent um, centre. So he's a guy they need in that team. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of value at wing fullback. Centre's a bit tricky. Yeah, I don't think Iroh uh, gets to start either. I think if, if a guy like Bronson Zeri got the start yep. at 450 k you jump on that, but does he? Probably not. After four years, I think he starts yeah. off the bench or plays cut, to be honest. Yeah, it'd be tough for him to get in. I'm doing I'm doing Rate My Team as a series uh, for fantasy right now yep. as well. So people yep. are sending their teams in. Um, look, center's a tricky spot. A lot of people are just parking Strange and Iroh there because they don't want to yeah. think about it. Um, there are a lot that have Avarillo right now as well, who I think is an avoid Deluxe. Yeah, me too. Me uh, too. He's just yeah, he's not a fantasy producer, right? And round three by round three by. Yeah, that you is. You can't well. have that in your centers. Yeah. And then you go through like it's. Yeah, I don't have too much. I mean, look, he, he, I'm going to throw a pot at you. I'll throw a big pot at you. You're a Chookies fan. You'll like this. It's it's stat only. There's nothing else to it. <laughs> um, Joseph Suwali, he averaged 30 points last year when he played wing. Sorry, when he played center, 30 points yep. when he played center, 50 when he played wing. Now, if he option. was to land on the wing, which would require Dan Super to get dropped, which I don't think they're going to do. I'll do that. He, yeah, no, but if he ended up on the wing, he's very potent at center. Don't touch him. But when he, if he's playing wing in real life, he's a guy you might put in your centers. If he if he got DPP, I'd probably think about it. If he got he wing, has it. wing. Oh, he has it now. Yep. Yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, look, it's definitely a good option. I've actually brought Seb Chris in. He's my little pod. I, oh, I, I, yeah. I really, I really like what I saw last year, and I think he gets that center spot. I really do. Who's at fullback last year, though? Yeah, he was, but I think he'll get the center spot. I think Chevy Stewart will get the fullback spot at the Raiders. Is is Kotrick available at center? Um, Kotrick, I think, is he's another great option. I've actually got him on my, uh, in my eighteen to twenty one. Yeah, so he's. Yeah, he's real center. cheap too. He's Godric. had two years in his career. Yeah. Look, he's had about a six year career. But he's had two seasons where he's averaged thirty eight points. Yeah, and he costs you what is he two hundred and sixty k. Yeah, I'm exactly. not guaranteeing it because he's had plenty of years where he's averaged twenty. But yeah. he could be good. Another guy I'll throw in here as well uh, is Paul Alamotti, and oh, yes. look, not guaranteed a starting spot at all. But if there's anything that goes wrong for Penrith in the preseason or whatever it is. Uh, I just think he he showed a lot of really positive traits at Dogs last year uh, as a tough place to attack. You throw anyone into Penrith, let alone a guy with his talent, at 450K, guaranteed money. Taylor May, mate, he's back. Uh, Rumours are he's going to play centre for Stephen what's, Crichton this year. What's he cost? 600K. He's, yeah. Mm. he like He's a premium option, but he did really well on the wing last year before that injury. Um, could be an option there, but... I. For for me, I I the only pair for I take is Cleary and then possibly Yo or Sorensen. Um, I try and steer clear of most of them just because yeah. they do spread points around a lot. But mate, let's jump off the centers. Uh, it is quite difficult. Let's jump into the wing fullbacks now. Yep. A great position in NRL fantasy. Uh, some really good ones. Kalen Palmer. We saw what he did the back end of last year. Uh, you know, won the Daly M in eighteen games really, and and was that and got the Knights. From 14th to 7th, so uh, from 14th yeah. to 5th, sorry. Uh, so incredible stuff there. He He's in my team already. I think I think you got to have Ponga. He's premium. He's one of my first picks. You reckon you got to have Ponga? That's yeah, a big, that's a big I, statement. Don't gloss over that. That's, at, uh, at, uh, at fullback, 100%. Don't, this 5'8 stuff, don't play him at 5'8. I don't know uh, why the Knights play him at 5'8. They won't do no. it again. No. See, no. I'm I'm of the opinion that Ponga is a guy you can, uh, you can miss. You can okay. skip on. Wow. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about it. it. It's a bit of a, a theory I run with for fantasy um, yep. where you don't buy volatile players at their starting price 
unless you think there's there's value in it, right? Right. So okay. with a guy like Ponga, there's going to be a period of games where it just doesn't come together for him and he scores 20, 30 points a couple of weeks in a row and he drops down 100K or whatever it is, right? So we look at last year and you go, Scotty Drinkwater. Scotty Drinkwater, what's he? He's about 800K this year. You could have bought him for 500 in mm. round 11. Uh, we look at Kalen Ponga. He was, Ponga was 400K around round 11. Ruben Garrick, who got up to about 800K, he was 500K as well. Like the, these guys just before Origin, I mean, it all sort of happened at once. So we got a bit yeah. lucky, but they all sort of fell off in the pre in the early rounds. Tedesco just never bounced back. Um, and they were value. So my view is, and this is why we were talking about Harry Grant earlier and Isaiah Yo and Payne Haas. I'm happy to spend the money on these guys because they're going to hold their values. You know, Isaiah Yo scored below 50 once last year. Yeah, that's it. Right. So you buy them, they hold their value. I'm looking at guys like Pappenhausen, if he starts, like obviously yeah, everyone's on that. That's not revolutionary. 56 average when he starts. Um, Jaden Campbell is a 45 average at fullback when he mate, plays. It, it is Campbell season. I'm telling you now. It is Campbell oh, mate, season. Guaranteed. Yeah. Oh, we bring Brimson, Brimson at center. center too. Oh, yeah. That'll yeah. be good for footy as well. Like he's, uh, Br- I love, Br- I, I rate Brimson so much more highly than anyone. I, I think yeah. I overrate him a little bit because I think he's a freak, but. You could chuck him anywhere on the field. He's just going to make plays. Like, yeah, that's what he's about. Chuck him at center. The Titans, the Titans haven't had that sort of explosiveness on the edge in recent years. Yeah. They've got yeah, Firma and Fafita, but and he's a representative player, mate. He's played Origin. He's a monster. Oh. If you had him and let's say you chucked him with uh, Khan Pereira, oh, for yeah. example, and they were outside Fafita, let's just hypothesize. I don't even <laughs> it's the same size. That is absurd. That's both of them won't get the ball though. What? Both well, of them won't get the ball. Fafita no. will just run it. <laughs> oh, no. He, he doesn't mind a pass. But you get yeah. Foz out there. He's the right guy. Look, Desi Hasler is there too as coach. Yeah. That's an easy choice. Um, I'll throw another one out. I'm keen to get your thoughts on this. Uh, Xavier Savage. So he averages yeah. 38 points when he plays uh, football. So the male I've heard out of Canberra mm. is they're really keen on Chevy Stewart at the moment. Yep. Um, And apparently he's beaten Xavier Savage. So Xavier Savage Man, he's was young. In, he's yeah, young. Yeah, but Xavier Savage was in cup with Chevy Stewart and Xavier Savage was playing wing. Yep. Yep. Cup footy. So I I actually think Chevy Stewart's gonna get the fullback spot. I think I think what, what are you hearing gonna, there? Like is it just that Chevy is so good or is it the same it's quite, wrong? Like what's well the 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 wording was uh I actually believe Savage is out of favor. At the mm. Raiders, um, th- this is just hearsay. Uh, so if you are, if anyone's listening, this it's not coming from me. It's just what I've heard. Uh, but I've heard that Savage is a bit out of favour, and that yeah, they're really liking Chevy Stewart. He's progressed really well. He's fast. He's young. He's fit. The only thing he doesn't have is size. Uh, mm. Size is a bit of an issue, especially at fullback these days, where we see how big fullbacks are. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, Savage would have been a great option. It, it's it's really hard with the Raiders because Sticky just changes teams like that. Mm. And so we we don't know. Like we we could think that these guys are gonna play and, and he could have Josh Papali here at fullback. Like we just yeah. don't know with Sticky. You preseason, know? right? Preseason. Yeah. If Savage yeah. comes in, puts in a good preseason, performs yeah. well in the trials, let's say Chevy looks a bit young, because he is young. You gotta right? pick him. Yeah. Um yeah. it'll it'll swap around. So I'm just looking at the numbers right now, I'm not really sure. speculating. But look, if you got Chevy, if Chevy starts, he's obviously a, a buy as well, he's cheaper. Oh yeah. Um, I just think that Savage, though, like he's got to start somewhere. Like you, you look at him. I know there's a lot of good fullbacks out there right now. Uh, where would he? Yeah. Where would he start? Where would he start? He he wouldn't play wing because uh, yeah. they'd have Rapiner and I think Kotrick on both. I wings. mean, in another club. Like, oh, if- in another club. I mean, he look. He's a good fullback. He's a good fullback. Yeah. I mean, a, a, a team like not many dragons i mean you know sloan? sloan sloan's a good fullback but savage could fit in there you They're know maybe similar, those two um they are you you could i, I personally yeah. think you could move sloan to a center um i think he'd be pretty explosive at center but mate it's really interesting the other one i wanted your opinion on mm. i mentioned him in centers but he's got dual position jesse arthur's mate now mm. if arthur's lands the spot at the broncos obviously no herbie there looks like cobo might move into the centers. So there is a wing spot available and Corey Oates seems a bit out of favor. Uh, if Arthur's does land that 
he's pretty cheap, mate. I think 320, 330 at the moment, um, dual position. You know, he'll he'll average about 30, but you'll get you'll get 30, 40 points with him. Yeah. Dual position, he's not bad. Yeah, I mean, my first thought is he's at the Broncos, he'll score tries. Yeah. Corey Oates, though, last year, he I think it took him about 11 games to score a try yeah. on that wing, right? So I then look at that and sort of go, am I overestimating Brisbane's edge attack for that wing? Maybe, I, I don't know, at 320k, uh, a, a winger on a team that's that good, you, you got to do it. It's, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mariner is the more complicated one because he's a bit mm. more expensive at 450, but a more dynamic offensive player. Not a great stat profile for fantasy, so he's probably a guy I'm skipping. But yeah, there's a few guys floating around there. People are talking about Cobo even, and do you do you get Cobo playing at center? Are you going to get the Herbie Farmworth stat line out of him? He's priced around forty already. Uh, I don't really see yeah. it. Not um, for me. Not for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, the the issue I have with Cobo is that I I think it's hard when they're when they're wingers because they just don't. They just haven't projected those scores in recent times, um, which which sound effects. I know he's moved to centre, but I just can't because of the previous years. Um, we still got Walsh there, as I spoke to you before. Walsh is that very uh, dynamic player that you know he can he can churn out scores of seventy or he can churn out scores of twenty. Uh, he has about ten errors to one good one, but is is a dynamic player and could definitely fill in the spot there. But my fullbacks, I at the moment I'm on Pappenhausen. Ponga and Campbell. And then stacks, my backup. Mate. Yeah, stacks, stacks, on mate. stacks on stacks. That's it. And then for my backup, I've got uh, Chevy Stewart and I've got Kotrick sitting in there as well, who can play a bit of fullback. Um, mate, I would say it's Teddy season. I, I hope he comes back. It'd be great to see. But uh, I'm surprised you haven't mentioned Guffo in there. Oh, yeah. He's one of those guys. If he gets cheap, you go buy him, right? Yeah. He's more sure. of a super coach guy, though. Um, yeah. in the, he's got a great profile in terms of the assists and that kind of thing which it's not rewarded in fantasy as much uh no. it's more of a super coach that but yeah i mean i don't like here's one i got for you actually because you got some inside mail around the place does not voluma land somewhere before round one no i i think i think nof is done i think he goes to super in league. nrl or, yeah okay, yeah i think yeah. he goes to super league i yeah. just i i actually really feel for nof like like what what he did was was wrong like you can't turn your phone off and and you know, there a lot of mail going around that yeah, like he, you know, he faked a bit of a sickie and then turned his phone off and whatnot. And like, I, from we've a club all, point, we've all been there, man. Like, it's, we've we've, it's we've all job. been there, but but uh, from a club point of view, like yeah. that's his that's his career, and you can't really be doing that. But yeah. from his point of view, like he's their top try scorer. Yeah. He he is the Tigers. Like David Nofaluma is the Tigers, and I think I think it's real. It, it's it's going to hurt them a lot if he. Yeah. You know, if he ends up somewhere else, I, the the writing was on the wall when he went to Melbourne. I think when he went mm. to Melbourne and he had that taste of victory and success, the writing was on the wall. Then he sort of came back to the Tigers a bit like, oh, you know, I've seen that the grass is greener. But it'll be interesting, mate. I don't think he stays in the NRL. I personally think he goes to Super League, but mm. only time will tell. But I just wanted to say big thank you to Daniel for jumping on, mate. It has been a pleasure. That is our fantasy chat. For tonight, uh, don't forget, you can check out our comps. Go to uh, NRL, the casual athlete. You've got a comp going, don't you, mate, at the moment, Fantasy? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Um, we'll drop it in the, the description. We'll drop yeah. it in the descriptions. It's on our social medias as well. The Ruck Infringer, we've got one going as well. So check them out. Happy Fantasy playing. And look, I hope you all win. As long as you beat Daniel, that's the main thing. <laughs> all right, until well, next mate, time. I'm in your comp, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> until next time. See you later, everyone. Yeah,